this is Christina, and today I'm going to show you how to build a pivot table from a large amount of data. So what you see on the screen here is a requisition report, and it's from August 1st, 2023. So the first step in this is to click on this little triangle. This selects all of the data provided. Next step is to go to insert, and you see we have options that come up here. Pivot table is what we want to select, so we'll click on that and then we click OK. So it's created a new sheet for us here. Now the next step, we need to click into this square and then right click and select pivot table options. So we have a lot of different tabs here, but the one we're concerned with is display. And what we want to do here is check classic pivot table layout. And this enables us to drag items from over in the pivot table fields to our pivot table and then click OK. So what we want to look at is the data around job family. So the first thing we need is we want to have the job family. So I just typed in job and it brought up all the items that start with that. So first I'm going to drag over job family. The next thing we want to know is of this data that we have on our sheet number one, what are the job titles associated with that job family? So we drag it right next to the job family. Boom, so now it's basically categorized it. So we have administrative and we have all of the administrative job titles. And then we have advanced practitioner and all of those job titles, allied health, etc. So you see why we did that. So the next step on the right side of the line here now we want to look at the data. So we want to look at openings. There's two options here. There's total openings that includes jobs that are filled but don't have a candidate in hire. And then there's jobs that are left to fill. That means we have a candidate who's moving through the process. However, it's still um, not filled. So let's drag over openings so we know our total number of openings. And then let's also drag over openings left to fill. And you'll see there can be a difference. Like for example, administrative assistant, we have total of four openings, three of which are still waiting to be filled. That means we filled one. And this will make more sense as we do some additional work here. The next field we wanna add are interviews. So we wanna know which requisitions have candidates who have moved to interview. So we just drag it into here and now it's showing. So we have count of interview status. So for example, this administrative assistant, we have four total openings, three of which still need to be filled, but two of those have candidates in interview status. Now the final piece we wanna add is candidate status. Candidate status is essentially those individuals who are in offer or beyond. So let's move that here. So going back to our administrative assistant example, we have four total openings, three of which are left to fill. There are two of those three that are in have candidates in interview status. And then we have two of the recs who are in offer or beyond. So just because they're in offer doesn't mean it takes away from this number from the total openings. The candidate actually has to be moved to hired to, to affect this number. So it does get a little confusing. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. But the more you work with pivot tables, the more this will make sense. So just going back to our pivot table here. Um, let's go over. OK. So one of the things I like to do, instead of sum of total openings, I do total openings here. And this is just openings left to fill. This is Rex in interview status. And this is Rex in offer and oops, beyond. Okay, now it's looking good. So, and I scroll over here. One of the things I really like that you're able to do from this pivot table is you can go to your total. If you just click on that, it highlights all of the totals. 
and you can highlight it a different color. So it really makes it pop. You can see your totals when you're talking about it with a hiring manager or just talking about it with your talent acquisition partner. It just makes it much easier. So what I would recommend doing here, again, this is our pivot table. So we're gonna name it as such. We're gonna rename it. And then this first tab was our data. So we're gonna rename that data. Let's go back to our pivot table. We're gonna select this data. I'm gonna do control C, which copies it. I'm gonna hit on the plus to create a new sheet. And then I'm going to select this first box, hit control V, which pastes it. And I'm gonna clean it up by removing those top two areas. And now we have our pivot table by job family here. So now we can rename this. This will be by job family, okay? And we're gonna move that to the far end so we can go back to our pivot here and we can actually edit this to add more data. So what I'm gonna do now is click on the job family area. I'm gonna drag it back to my pivot table fields. And now what I'm gonna do is select department. What we wanna be able to do is look at this data in a variety of different ways. So now I'll drop that here so now I have all of my department listings and the positions by departments, and you can see the openings here. It's all the same data, but we're looking at it in a different way. So if I click on my total, and you get this little arrow when you click on total, it selects all of your totals. You can click a new color, so it highlights it, makes it look beautiful. And then again, we're gonna select all of the data here in the little arrow. Control C to copy. And now I'm gonna paste that into a brand new sheet. Control V drops it in. I'm gonna remove those top two lines. And now this sheet will rename to by department. Okay, and I like to move that in front of the pivot table. I always like to have pivot and data on the far right and then my areas to look at here. So let's go back to our pivot again. We're gonna grab the department. We're gonna drag it back to our pivot table fields. Another way to look at this data is by recruiter. So let's pull up recruiter. We've got that, we'll drag it over. So now we can see the recruiter's name, see what positions they're carrying, number of openings, openings left to fill, recs and interview status as well as Rex and Offer and Beyond. So it gives us a really good sense of what each recruiter is doing and the work they're you know, handling at the time. So now we'll click on their total and that allows us to highlight it. Click on the new color so it looks pretty and you're able to visually see the data faster. And now we'll click our arrow, Control C to copy. We'll click on plus Make sure we're selecting that first box and then control V to paste. Now we can just remove those top two blocks. Boom, and it looks perfect. We'll go ahead and rename this tab and this is by recruiter. And then we wanna move that to the left-hand side of the pivot table. So we have by job family, by department, by recruiter. Let's go back to the pivot table one last time. Let's pull this recruiter data back over and let's look at this data by hiring manager. So we can drag this over and now we can click on total here. Oops, we have to wait till we have the arrow and then click total. It selects everything, give it a new color so it's easy to visually see. So now we can see requisitions by the hiring manager itself. And I find this is very helpful to leadership just to see, okay, my hiring managers have this many openings, even though they can see it by department, they can see it by recruiter, they can see it by job family. It's helpful to break it out in different ways. 
So now that we've selected this data by clicking the magic button here in the upper left hand corner, we'll hit Control C. We'll click the plus button to add a new sheet. Make sure we've selected this first little A1 square. Now we click Control V. So now we've pasted in that final pivot table. We're going to remove areas one and two, just delete. And I'm just hitting the right click button and then delete from there. So now we have our data by hiring manager. Hiring manager. We can click enter and now we can click this and move it to the right, or I'm sorry, the left hand side of the pivot table and I actually like this one to be the last. So we have, if we scroll by job family, by department, by recruiter, by hiring manager, we have our live pivot table, which we could still edit this if we wanted to, but no need to do it. And then we have the raw data. That is how you build a pivot table. And there are many uses of pivot tables, but this is how we use it primarily in recruitment. We'll be looking at this more and dive in deeper, but I wanted to give you a quick demo so you'll know how to do this in the future.